What is the difference of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan? I chose this topic because I want to explain their health condition as to why Bruce Lee died at an early age and also why Jackie Chan is still alive up until today. Okay, so let's start right away. We all know that Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee are both martial artists and they are both actors. They enter into movie industry and of course, what's their motive? To entertain people. But the way they entertain people is where their difference lies. They have different motivation in entertaining people. Second, their way of training is different because of their motivation. Third, their recovery. These are the three factors that affect their health. And these are the factors that is the reason why Bruce Lee died earlier at an early age and also the reason why Jackie Chan is still healthy and alive until today despite of all those injuries that he encountered during in his making movies so let's start so motive of Jackie Chan in entertaining people is he wants to make people happy he wants to make people laugh enjoy his movie by laughing and happy like that so he want to make movie that make them laugh okay and he train in a way that he reach those purpose that's his motive in training how about bruce lee bruce lee entertain his viewers his audience by making himself the best by amazing them with his incredible speed with his incredible power and strength and with his physical lean physical body you know that's why most of the time when he do his you know, movie he always remove his shirt you know to show how physically fit he is their motivation lies how they train of course they both train rigid training jackie chan start training by running three to five miles a day same with bruce lee running three to five miles a day and after that they do whatever exercise they're doing i saw their schedules their notes on what exercise what training they're doing and really they're both having doing uh, some kind of rigid intense training but uh, bruce lee trains harder and trains longer than jackie chan because of his motive in entertaining people so bruce lee entertained people not only by making movies he also showed demonstration that one inch punch free sparring you know to show how he beat his opponent easily you know because of his speed his power and strength all kinds of demonstration aside from his movie so bruce lee wants to maintain that and the reason why he maintained being the best is because he trained hard really hard imagine he trained seven to ten hours a day for seven years that's tough and that's why he you know he has that incredible speed power and strength and physical fitness and you know when he push up he push up about 1500 push up with two hands and 500 push up with just one hand and 200 push up with just two fingers he must have trained hard to reach those levels okay so it, in short he's really training very hard and even his wife said when he do sit up he sit up forever and his daughter discovered the notes of his training i saw the note and i tried to write those notes and it even took me about 20 to 30 minutes just writing those notes so imagine if he do this the whole day all this training it takes him the whole day no wonder why he trained about 10 hours a day so we, I, I myself experience also some rigid training, seven days training, ten days training, but the most difficult training I in, uh, encounter is twenty-five days training for ten hours a day. We have that instructor's training in Philippines before, way back in nineteen ninety-seven, and we train hard. And for the first ten days, it's really tough. I have headache. I can hardly urinate. It's hard to wake up in the morning because everything is painful, everything is stiff. And after some time, 
12, 15 days, your body adjusts into that situation. And you train hard, you become strong, that uh, you can fight and you can feel the endurance of your body. And after the 25 day of training, on the last day we do promotion test. And we underwent a 21 fights, non-stop, no resting. Just continue fight for 21 fights. You don't need to win. You just need to persevere. You just need to survive in 21 fights. Of course, you're so tired, running out of breath. You can still bear. I remember I got kick in my body and then I was thrown away. But I stand up and continue fighting. If I do that today, maybe if I got kick that way, Maybe I have some injury or a back injury or whatever. So I understand the result of doing a rigid training. There's one guy who experienced the same training. He wants to try Bruce Lee's training for one year, doing training six hours a day. And he said after some time, he said, you know, he's like half human, half animal. And he can fight anybody. But there is some time that he experienced some pain and he was sent to hospital. He got seizures, he got headache also. And the doctor says that whatever you're doing, you have to stop. And Bruce Lee, by doing this kind of training, after some time he got some back injury. And the doctor says, you have to stop your training. You have to hold on to your training for some period of time. For your recovery so either you hold on to your training for some time or you stop training but bruce lee did not listen he kept going on his training he continued to train hard so what happened he ended up experiencing those pain in the head a headache body pain and of course he has no choice but to take some pain reliever he has no choice but to say, take some steroids, corticosteroids. It's not only the first time that he experienced that pain in that uh, apartment where he died. Before he died, he had some headache. And Betty Ting Pei gave him some pain reliever. And many thought that he died because of that pain reliever. Some says that he died of dehydration. It was found out that he died of cerebral edema. But for me, those are just a result of his overtraining. He overtrained that he end up torturing his body. You know, your body can take those kind of torture for some time. But in the long run, you have no choice but your body has to give up. Your, our autonomic nervous system is divided into two. We have sympathetic and parasympathetic. When you're training, you're under sympathetic nervous system, where your body, your adrenal gland is releasing cortisol and adrenaline to give you extra strength so that you can do your training. But uh, there's some time also that your body get drained out, your adrenal gland get drained out. That's why there's so what we call adrenal exhaustion, that your body cannot produce cortisol or adrenaline anymore. So what do you need to do? The only way you can do is to rest so that your body can recover. But because Bruce Lee wants to train his image of being the best. He keep training, training. And uh, because of that, his body cannot take those, those pressure anymore. When you train, you put pressure on your blood, in your arteries from your body. And put pressure in the brain also. The body can take that pressure for some time. But the pressure of the arteries in the brain is the weakest arteries. The weakest arteries is in your brain. For some period of time of doing that over time, your brain cannot take it anymore for some time. That's what happened to Bruce Lee. For me, Bruce Lee died of overtraining. Those cerebral adrema are just a result of his overtraining. Those headaches are not the first time. He's been having headache before. And he's already had warning from his doctor that, you know, you cannot continue what you're doing anymore. You have to stop. But what happened? Bruce Lee kept pushing himself to the point of already torturing his body. It's no longer about endurance. It's no longer about rigid training, but it's already torture. The body cannot take it anymore. That's the reason why his body gave up. How about Jackie Chan? 
Jackie Chan trained also. And even just training, he experienced injury too. But more than that, he experienced more injury during his stance, during making movie. How many times he got, he almost died, fell off from the tree, fell off from the building, all kinds of stunts. He got injury on his head, on his shoulder, on his neck, broken bones, broken on his knee, and bruises. All over his body, he has a lot of injury. But why he still recover? Because for me, his motivation. His motivation of wanting to make people happy, wanting to make people enjoy, that is his spirit also. So, as what I told a while ago, when you are under sympathetic nervous system, you are under stress. When you are happy, when you are laughing, when you are smiling, you are telling your body that you, you're okay, you're already safe. So what happened? Your body can easily shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So if your body shifts to parasympathetic mode, it is there where healing takes place, where recovery takes place, where rest and digest takes place. That's why that kind of spirit makes him recover easily. And also that kind of spirit of being happy and smiling all the time, you encourage your natural painkiller, which is endorphin, that makes your, you healthy. It's a natural painkiller. We have a natural painkiller in the body. But Bruce Lee, take steroids, take painkiller, which even have side effects. But Jackie Chan, because of his attitude of making people happy, of being happy and smiling, you know, he encouraged his happy hormone, oxytocin, dopamine, endorphin, serotonin. This makes his body healthy. Right now, he's doing some charity. He explained what he feels by helping people before. That kind of feeling is tremendous. That's why he continued to do charity. And that is even making him more healthy. So I think that's one reason why, despite of all the injuries that Jackie Chan experience, he's still alive and healthy up until this time. Speaking about martial art, there are three major original purpose of martial art. The first is we do martial art for self-defense. Second is for physical fitness, for us to be physically fit and healthy. So we do martial art to be healthy, to be physically fit. Third is self-discipline or spiritual discipline. Discipline has something to do with uniting your mind and body. Your body and mind has to harmonize. That is what self-discipline is all about. Consistency is, needs self-discipline. Endurance needs self-discipline. But self-discipline that martial, original martial art is talking about is unity of mind and body. That your mind and body has to unite, has to harmonize. You have to listen to your mind and you have to listen to your body also. They have to harmonize. And what happened to Bruce Lee? His body is already saying no. But he keeps pushing his body. And he ends up torturing his body. And it's that's no longer martial art. That is already the same as like this singer who died early because of taking drugs. And, you know, he's doing more than entertaining people they, they go beyond the capacity of their body they abuse their body so bruce lee he wants to maintain his uh, image of being the best in terms of speed endurance capability power strength his physical body he wants to maintain this one by training hard but to the point of torturing his body it's already enough for us to see that is the best. It's already enough to see his speed, his power and strength, his one inch punch. After some time that those are declined, we understand. He don't need to prove all the time. We understand that the body has limitations too. If he's not the best anymore, if somebody, you know, surpasses his capability, we know his original, we understand already. That doesn't degrade him. And that doesn't lose his admirers, his fans. 
So I would like to give another example, uh, like for example, uh, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is one of the best pound for pound fighter. He's been beating even taller and bigger than him, you know, for years. But uh, he wants to maintain that and he still keep fighting. He is about to retire, but still he wants more, some more fights. He wants to fight more. And we observe on his uh, previous fights that his speed and power is not the same as before. And Manny Pacquiao has to accept that. And during his last fight, one of the best fighter, the clients, whom he fight with is a substitute who is not really the best one. But he still end up the loser. He lose that fight. So he has to accept that he can no longer do the same as what he's doing before. He needs to accept that the physical body has capability, has limitations too. Okay? That's why, you know, maybe it's good if he lost the fight for fighting the best fighter. But losing the fight for just fighting a substitute one is even degrading for me, you know. But uh, my point is, Mani Pacquiao has to accept that uh, the body has limitations too. And that is what Bruce Lee needs to accept too. He don't need to torture his body for training. He lost the, the image of martial art. Martial art is not only about kicking and punching. What happened on the present martial art is, is that we focus more on the technical aspect. Bruce Lee was recognized in that way, but that is not only the image of martial arts, more than that. That's why martial artists, when you do martial art, that makes you to be a better person supposed to be, okay? Martial art makes you a better person. And that is one thing that Bruce Lee failed to show to the people. And another thing is that, you know, he ended up torturing his body. So the main reason why Bruce Lee died is because of overtraining. Cerebral edema is just the result of doing overtraining. Dehydration might be, but it's because of overtraining. And I hope this gave you some idea on why Bruce Lee died at an early age in Jackie Chan is still alive up until today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.